was perhaps because she burst into incredulous laughter at the hysterical fits thrown by the young woman who brought the charges of witchcraft against so many citizens of Salem that the old woman found herself among the accused. Anne Putnam made the accusation, and the old woman declared in court that she was a gospel woman. But the girls cried out, gospel witch, gospel witch. And even though she continued to deny the charges, Martha Corey was hanged. Martha Corey. It is her. It's Nola Madison. It just can't be a coincidence. Corey. I just have to find out her first name. Yeah. Who? All right, put him on. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, uh, Dr. Cavanaugh. Uh, this is Cliff Nelson from the DA's office. What can I do for you, Mr. Nelson? Well, you can't do anything for me, but I'm over at Deborah Saxon's place, and she's in real bad shape. Well, what's wrong? She have another fainting spell? No, no, no. She's, she's conscious, but she's... Well, she's... Just in real bad shape. I mean, she's standing, laying there, uh, shivering and, and, and looking at the ceiling, and, and it scares me to death. All right, you stay with her, Mr. Nelson. I'm on my way over. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. And she's not the only one I'm going to see. As well, Deborah left the hospital only 24 hours after she was admitted. Well, she wanted to go home for Christmas. I know. That's why I released her so soon. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. Anyway, I don't suppose I'll be delayed more than an hour. If I am, I will give you a call. Okay. Well, listen, don't worry about dinner. I mean, I can have a sandwich at my desk. I'm used to it. Well, maybe I can meet you after the 11 o'clock news, then. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Take care, honey. Bye-bye. Hey, now, wait a minute. I heard that stuff about a sandwich at your desk. If you're stuck for dinner, why don't you join me? Oh, Marco, thank you. That's very kind of you, but... Kindness has nothing to do with it, darling. I, I could use the company. Well, if that's the case, why don't you join Miles and me if he does show up later? Keep asking you again and again, and you keep saying no. It's, uh, it's different if it's just the two of us. I, it's like two lost ships. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I kind of hate to be a third wheel. Margo, I understand that, but we don't see very much of you socially. Well, I guess that's true. I've been kind of limiting my social life. Seems like the only place I ever go anymore is April and Draper's, and I'm not too sure my son-in-law is too fond of that idea. Come on, Marco. I thought the two of you have been getting on very well recently. No, he tolerates me. I mean, he's in a pretty good mood, so he tolerates even those he doesn't like. Well, I wouldn't say that Draper doesn't like you. <sighs> Nicole, I'm not going to fool myself on that little area. Believe me, um, underneath that polite young man, there's a very angry, snarling dog that'd like to leap out and grab me by the throat. <laughs> he, he keeps it very well leashed. I think that's because of April. Uh, after all, I am April's mother, and I am his baby's granny to be. Well, uh, I still think that you should widen your horizons. Why? Uh, oh, code, right? It means I should find another fella? <laughs> well, what's wrong with it? Well, we could be a foursome for dinner. My dear, you forget one important fact. I'm an old married lady, remember? I don't fool around. Well, maybe that's just the problem. Maybe you should do something definite. I mean, you haven't, have you? I don't think I haven't thought about it. It's all I ever do think about. I get up in the morning, I look at the phone, and I wonder if I should pick it up and start divorce proceedings. But you don't make the call? No, I, I don't. Margo, don't you feel that, that possibly making a clean break would make you feel a lot better? I mean, then you could have a whole new start. Let me tell you something, Nicole. I have wanted a divorce from that man ever since I found out the kind of person Elliot was. It seemed like the best sort of revenge. But revenge shouldn't be. Now look, the don't reason. talk to me about anything philosophical about how I should turn the other cheek or how you shouldn't strike back even though you've been hurt. I don't want to hear it, all right? Even if it's true. I'm not going to lecture you. But I still just don't feel that I understand why you haven't called the. What? Stop started divorce proceedings? That's very simple, darling. Because that is no longer satisfactory to me. Not now. 
Not now that Elliot has a, another woman in his life. I know that I don't understand that. <sighs> Darling, don't you understand that if he received a divorce paper in the mail, it wouldn't bother him. In fact, I think he'd be delighted. And at this point, I just don't want to give him that satisfaction. You know, you could give a man a terrible complex, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't. Well, you can't seem to do a stake very much of me. Every time things get a bit too close, between us, you shy away. What am I supposed to conclude from that? Nothing. You know, I do have my personal vanity. Not too many women have pushed me away so strenuously. Not unless they were being coy, of course, and you are definitely not the coy type. Coyness is for the young Elliot. Doesn't become women of my age. Age? There we have that word again. Well, can't we spend one evening without that word being mentioned? Uh, would you like a drink? Well, the wine I was drinking was from your lips. Uh, that's a terrible line, Elliot. It sounds as if it came from one of my worst movies. Why do you allow yourself so few illusions now? I've learned to want reality. Yeah. Haven't you heard reality has been banned for lack of interest? Do you want me to be a realistic too and assume that this rejection means what I think it means? And what's that? That you just simply don't feel the way about me that I feel about you. You know that isn't true. Now what is it? It's just uncertainty, Elliot. Uncertainty, yes. Yes, of course, you still have your feelings uh, for your husband. But why shouldn't you? He's had 25 years head start on me. You're wrong. I have only one feeling for Owen now. I loathe him. Oh, that's a new word in your vocabulary. Well, it's the only word to describe how I feel about him. How was this brought about? I've stopped having illusions, that's what. I know now that there isn't any chance of ever getting back together. Owen's already filed for divorce. In California? That's where we were married. That's where our marriage will end. It's no fault country, so there's no contesting it, you know? Not that I'd want to. Owen is out of my life now, and I'm glad. Well, then. You can make room in your life for someone else, can't you? You do need someone in your life, Nola. So do I. You mean we're both rebound cases, is that it? Well, that's putting it crudely. It's not as if we were both still carrying torches for someone else. God knows I'm not. Uh, are you really sure? No lingering feelings for Margot? She's still a terribly attractive woman, Elliot. I saw her recently, you know. I, uh, I went back to the apartment to pick up some clothes I'd forgotten. I'm surprised she let you in. I thought you two weren't on friendly terms. She didn't have to let me in. I just got into the elevator and walked in. You see, as far as the world is concerned, I'm still Mr. Margot Huntington. <laughs> you mean not even the elevator man knows you're separated? Of course not. Margot wouldn't admit to a soul that her marriage has failed. Not unless it's absolutely necessary, of course. As in the case of a divorce. What about that divorce, Elliot? She hasn't taken any steps in that direction, has she? No, she hasn't. For some reason. Maybe she thinks she'll get back together one day. <laughs> oh, there's no chance in the world of that. Hey, listen, if that is your hand up... Uh, no, no, Elliot, that isn't it. I still can't really believe that... Well... When a man so much younger than I... Oh, there it is again. The subject never far from your mind. <laughs> or is there something else bothering you these days, Nola? What do you mean? Well, for the last few days I've sensed that... something else has been intruding on your thoughts. 
Am I right? I don't even know what you mean. Well, I mean, sometimes when, uh, when I'm with you, you seem to think of anything but us. <laughs> Do I have a rival? Don't be ridiculous. And then you're so hard to reach, uh, especially during the day. You seem to be away for hours at a time, sometimes the whole day. Where do you go? Out. Not even your maid seems to know where you are. Come on, why can't you tell me? I just go out. I have things to do and people to see. I thought you didn't know anyone in Monticello. And of course, your husband and son are in California. It's none of your business where I go. Sorry, just asking. I was begrudging the time he didn't spend with me. What's the matter? I have a headache. Oh, poor baby. Let me soothe it away. Uh, no, please, not now. I'm much too nervous to be touched right now. Elliot, can't you understand? Yes, of course. Perhaps you'd rather I left. I, I think it might be a good idea. I think I'd like to take a nap and refresh myself. Yes, it might be a good idea. Well, uh, see you in the morning. And you'd better be well to see me tomorrow morning. Uh, yes, I'm sure I will be. Pretty flowers. Who sent you these? I bought them myself. Oh. Well, the next bouquet you receive will be from me. Good night, darling. Don't bother to show me out. Sleeping. Well, uh, is she going to be okay? I think so. I wish I could say for certain. I don't understand her symptoms, to be completely honest with you. Well, she was as white as a sheet, and, and she was shaking, and, and her eyes couldn't focus on anything. Yeah, she was disoriented, no doubt about that. Did you answer a question honestly for me, Mr. Nelson? Well, of course, Doctor. You know if Deborah ever does any kind of drugs? Oh, wait, no, oh, no, no way. She's against all that stuff. I mean, it's almost a political issue with her. Right now, she's, she's chasing some pusher. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I guess we have to remember that she's been through a shocking ordeal. Maybe she uh, got cured a little bit too quickly. Well, ah, so you think that this relapse is just psychological? Perhaps. But I'm not going to ignore the possibility of some organic cause. She was tested fairly extensively at the hospital, but maybe we missed something. Are you, are you trying to say that she has some kind of disease? Can't rule it out. How serious do you think it is? I have no idea, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> you got to have some idea. I mean, that's your job, isn't it? I mean, this is important. Why? You don't know how important it is. Why? What do you mean? Oh, well, yeah. You see, Doc, I, uh, I, I kissed her. For some reason, she seemed in better shape after that ordeal in the woods than the last time I examined her here. And that seems very odd to me. Well, that would mean that maybe what's ever causing the, her illness is here in the apartment, you know? Like, like maybe she's allergic to something. Well, now, that's a thought. Maybe she is. Hey, don't look at me. I'm not here that often. Well, I hope you can stay for a little while, at least, in case she needs something. Well, you want me to stay here? Yeah. yeah. I told you, I don't think it's anything contagious. Yeah, but I got things to do, you know? I've got to be in court. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, you told me you were a friend of Deborah's. Well, I am a friend of Deborah's. But she's got other friends. I mean, what, what about Steve Guthrie? No, I mean, no, he's probably on duty now. Never around when you need him. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's this, there's this old lady who lives across the hall who's always trying to help out Deborah. Yes, I'm very interested in that old lady. As a matter of fact, I was going to pay her a visit myself. Well, good, good. Look, well, why don't you ask her to come on over, okay? <laughs> what is that? It's fruitcake. Come on, you know, back the halls with you know, fruitcake. Never said she got it from the old lady. Mrs. Corey? Yeah, yeah, that's her name. Well, I think I'll just take a uh, slice of that myself. And now, look, don't you think you ought to ask Deborah if you can have it? Oh, I don't think Deborah will mind. Stay here as long as you can. Yeah, yeah, right.
M. Corey. And I'm sure that M stands for Martha. This is me. Who's this? Oh, why, it's Martha Cora. Is is this Deborah Saxon's residence? Yeah, hi, Mrs. Corey. How are you? Why are you coming over? I, I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a friend of Deborah Saxon's, Cliff Nelson from the DA's office. Yeah, she told me all about you and how nice you've been to her. And uh, well, I'm sure the doctor told you how sick she is now, and I wanted to know when you could come over. Uh, like did you say that Deborah's sick again? Well, yeah. Uh, didn't Doctor Cavanaugh see you? I mean, he just went over to your apartment about a minute ago. Oh, but I'm not at home. I I'm visiting a friend of mine. Um, I just called to see how Deborah was. Well, uh, she's not so hot. In fact, it looks pretty bad. So I hope you can get over here real quick because uh, you can do more for her than I can. Oh, oh, that poor child. Yes, of course, I'll do anything I can for her. But I, I don't know when I can get there. You, you say you called the doctor? Yeah, uh, yeah, he left about a minute ago. Um, but he said there's nothing contagious, so, so you don't have to worry about it. Oh, well, that doesn't concern me. I'm far too old to catch anything. <laughs> but I am worried about that poor girl. Uh, sometimes I wonder if there isn't something fatally wrong with her. Oh, wait a minute. Did, did you say fatally? I mean, what kind of talk is that now? Oh, no, you tell Deborah that I called and, and hope that she feels better. And that I'll be there just as soon as I can. Uh, oh, one other thing. Why don't you warm up some of that nice soup I made for? I'm sure there's plenty left over in the refrigerator. Well, I'm really not much of a cook, Mrs. Corey. I, I... Oh, well, all you have to do is heat it up, young man. Oh, now, you yeah. tell Deborah I'll be there as soon as possible. Yeah, sure. Look, uh, I, I really don't know how, how to... How... In excessive use, the stimulant effect which may produce an exaggerated euphoria is soon followed by a profound and lasting depression. In cases of large overdoses, the result is amphetamine psychosis. These psychotic reactions, which may occur during its use or after withdrawal, are virtually identical to paranoid schizophrenia. That's the next game we play, Deborah. Ah, I'll place you. Madison? Uh, yes. Who's this? It's Dr. Cavanaugh, Mrs. Madison. I wonder if it'd be possible to see you this evening. 
to see me? Whatever for? There's something I have to talk to you about, something I consider extremely important. Well, I'm afraid I really don't have time, Dr. Cavanaugh. But if you could tell me what this is about... I'd rather not discuss the details over the phone, but it concerns a patient of mine, Deborah Saxon. Well, what in the world does that have to do with me? I think you'll understand when we talk about it. Look, I could come over to your place or you could come here. It really doesn't matter which. Well, I'm sorry, Doctor. I, I know that Deborah hasn't been well. Believe but... me, I would not ask this if I didn't think there was some urgency to it. The answer is no, Doctor. I have nothing to say to you or anyone else Spencer, about the girl. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Would it help any if I mentioned another name? What? Even if you're not interested in Deborah. Would you talk to me about a Mrs. Martha Corey? 